that's another lecture. But anyway, so um, my name is Chris Beavis. I'm an artist and a professor. I teach at Suffolk Community College. Um, I do sculpture and I do a lot of these lectures. I do workshops, lectures for adults, teens, kids. I love art. Um, so this is a, a lecture on, on the smile in art. Um, it's a broad concept. So we're gonna be going all over the place, um, starting with like a historical aspect of why don't you see smiles when you go into museums? Why don't you see smiles in, 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 these, in the most of the most of the painting? Not all, but but in, in the vast majority, particularly portraitures. Uh, and there's a reason why. Um, I'm gonna go into more contemporary terms. Like, like, like well, in our cultural context, we think of the smile. You, know, you it's cheese, you smile for a camera. That's not the way it always had been. Um, okay, so I start with this picture. I, I talked a little bit before we started recording. So this is Yao Ming. It's it's a, a meme. So that's where we're going to end up with some of the you know in this conversation. So like we, we think of the smile as as an indicator of friendliness, right? Of of, of happiness. It's it's um, affectionate. Um, the, the smile is a part of our social and cultural uh, understanding. You know, we are, are a visual species. We we understand what is it? Sixty seven percent of our communication occurs through physical means. Um, so the smile, facial features is a big aspect of that. So coming from our cultural understanding of the smile, when we take a look at things from the past and, and it, there's a disconnect, it, it becomes confusing. Uh, so yeah, so I threw, but throughout most of human history, the open smile was deemed deeply uh, unfashionable. I was like, why unfashionable? Like, what? Yeah. yeah. Um, think about like in, in particularly in Western culture and European culture, the, the the stoic kind of aspects. You know, one hides one's emotions. You know, like you don't present your emotions. When Freud came out with Freudian psychology, that, 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 that was revolutionary. You're sitting on a couch and talking about your your boo hoo problems. Um, like you think about like Victorian literature. You know, like, it's that, that that stoic kind of attitude, um, and even Romeo and Juliet. It's the name of the. It's the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, and it, it really is focusing on how the overly expressive emotional aspects that we present are a bad thing. You're supposed to keep emotions in check. You don't marry for love. You marry to solidify the wealth of two families. That's that. That's what the marriage was all about. Traditional marriage, right? So, so like getting emotional is just going to cause problems. So, so that that's kind of we have to think about the the mindset. That of the European families. families. That's that. That's what.
Umber, and, and even in mythological aspects as well, so the birth of Venus by um, uh, Botticelli. So because the, the, the things that were deemed appropriate and, and of value, Umber, uh, and, of and the, even in mythological aspect, aspects as well, so the birth of Venus by um, it was a certain, uh, uh, Botticelli. Weird. And you, you didn't so, want to take because like, the, the, the things uh, that so were some like Venus, which was the, the first like mythological painting since antiquity. Um, so here is I have um, the last one of another version of the Last Supper. So you, it, it's serious subject matter. So it needs to be taken serious. So so we we, we rarely see a smile. Um, hey, look at this one, Caravaggio. We're gonna get into more Caravaggio in a bit, huh? Yeah, uh, it's, it's not much, not much to smile at. Yeah, so um, this is Judith be beheading Holofernes uh, again. This is from the Bible, uh, um, Old Testament, where she, she's a strong-willed individual. She cuts off the head of the the leader of the that's taking over the village or town or whatever. She cuts his head off at night. So the, the emotional outbursts that we do see you know, in, in many of these, it's it's reserved for it's it's tragic. It's drastic it's emotional so you're going to reserve it for you know something a little bit extreme so things like that um here's uh, peter paul rubens the raising of the cross so here you have uh now we're in the baroque period where you know it's it's the the, the cross diagonals that create this energy and everything so and even as jesus is being put up on the cross he has this very serious kind of somber face right um it's it's kind of contradictory towards you know like the, the pain and suffering and anguish that he would be going through but they they're showing him in a in, in a revered uh, aspect. So then I have uh, Bernini's David. So this is we do see some facial gesture because this is again this is Baroque. This is in the middle of the, the experience where during the Renaissance it was more of like the the figures were put more of in a triangular symmetrical kind of component, and here you see the figures more in, in motion. Um, like um, you know the David we all think of, you know he's he's holding the sling on his shoulder, and it's before the battle. This is Doring, so it creates more energy. So you see the brow in his eyes. You see you see the facial features that that indicate you know the the, the experience that he's going through. But again, you know it, it's there's a lot of serious subject matter that's being touched upon. So same thing like Jacques Louis David, the death of Socrates. Um, so now we're in neoclassical. Uh, he's been has to commit suicide you know he's he's he upset the state and the state's punishment was you can either retract your statement or you have to to kill yourself and he chooses to kill himself he chooses to drink the poison so that way because uh, he refuses to to go back on what he said there are his his um followers as you know they're, they're lamenting it's highly emotional but it's there's a stoicism as well so another one by jacques louis david I talk about this, you know, I have different lectures and all of these are important. So the Oath of the Harati, again, the idea of, um, and the Jacques Louis David was a big supporter of the French Revolution, you know, get into that. So, so the pieces themselves, even though they hearken to the past and the serious subject matter of antiquity of, you know, the, the, this is the, the soldiers that are willing to give up their lives and they're, they're, they're making that oath for the Republic. Oh, the Republic, French Revolution, there's a connection there. So they play into the idea of, again, this very stoic, and it's the men that are stoic, not the women. The women are overly emotional. Oh, oh, Mr. David, how dare you? So, but that was the sentiment, that was the thought and, and of the time period, right? I don't agree with it, but but we can look at it and, you know, that's, yeah. So another one, yeah, so here's um, the Lictors bringing in Brutus, the bodies of his sons. And it's the women and children that are overly emotional. It's the father, the father who's he, he's kind of responsible for the his sons that have died. You know, he's, so we we get this sense of these dramatic historical aspects, these um, Christian Christian religious aspects, mythological, and again and again we see that that you know the, the serious. So this is romantic period, so there's a lot of action and everything going on. But even still, like, like we we don't see. You know, we have wide eyes here. But we don't see the the overly expressed aspects. That's not to say that there weren't, but I'm sure deliberately showing this that's you know of a serious nature. But here we go. The um, Aldofini wed wedding. They look like a happy couple to you. No, uh, at the time, I, I mean, granted, these are probably two wealthy aristocrats that are getting married, so like I don't know how much happiness needs to be involved. But um, there's a lot of symbolism in here that, that indicates um, 
that, that, that perhaps there is something very intimate. They're holding hands in this painting. You don't, yeah? Oh. Yeah. Um, and the, like the whole thing about the, the notes opening, you saw the Holy Spirit flooding in. Yes. And there's a candle that's lit. Uh, the, yeah. Right, the, the, the lights of the candle represent the, the, the components of God. Represents God, the windows open, so the Holy Spirit. How about that red bed? It's a whole <gasps> about them afraid. He puts, he puts himself the in the mirror, he's right. in there. Mm hmm. Yes. Oh, you, you know, you, you want to, do you want to do this? <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, I would argue against that. Yeah, I know. Some people argue this wasn't, except every single thing in the, in the painting had a meaning. Yes. And it's a lot of symbolism. Right. So, of course, but, some people have said that the relationship was an odd one because they had been the black dog together, but I think that, yeah, that's true. Well, the, the, in many, the, the dog is a symbol of, of loyalty. Fills in the bottom. Yeah. You know? Well, the, the, and they have their shoes off. In the painting, the sister has her shoes off. That, I did. Ah, uh, uh, okay. So that, I didn't know that one. Oh, yeah. Um, There's so much that can be talked about besides their, their lack of expression. Very commonly used. Yeah. Because and and it's it's Dutch, so so he's wearing all black because you're not not allowed to to yeah he's a Puritan you know like that kind of so but yes yeah, so like she's saying all everything in there is symbol and actually the words on the wall is basically says um, um, John van Eyck is here yes you know, this is, and the great and um, her way she's holding up the fabric so it looks like she's pregnant so it might suggest the idea of fertility. So, but yeah, they also the, the couple pieces of fruit. So, uh, oh, I don't think it's a shotgun wedding, but you know, like, but that 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 you want to have a, a, a fruitous uh, a marriage. You want it to be uh, again the symbols of loyalty. She's wearing green, so that heightens the emphasis of fertility and life as well. But that red bed, oh, what is it? The 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 poster bed. It's and it's open. That's scandalous right there. We wouldn't think of these things, right? I don't, you know, like when I, oh, when you learn about it, you, 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 so, so again, that's the cultural context that's, that's very different. Um, so, and then the fact, again, we're going to go harken back into the concept of the smile or the lack of, um, and I have a quote by, by, um, uh, uh, Mark Twain that I'll get into later, but, but I actually saw a 10 minute video talking about this one too, uh, but the, the lack of a smile wasn't intentional. Um, Many thought and argued that it's because, well, perhaps uh, everybody had bad teeth. And they didn't, have you ever heard that one? Some that's, people had bad teeth, so they didn't show it. But that's that's by most people, it's it's disputed. It, they don't think that that's the reason. Because if everybody had bad teeth back then, then what's the problem? You know, like so. Um, but the part of it is so. Even if that is fine, but it was, it was mentioned. But also, uh, again, the idea of how long you have to sit for these these poses, it's very hard to to to, to keep the muscles. Like, imagine if you're in a weird pose, like like running for a touchdown or something. I don't know, a ballet pose, whatever you pick. Can you hold that for very long? No. So, but it, same thing with a smile. It, after a while, the muscles, it, it things contort, things change, your face shifts, and and it doesn't look natural anymore. So when we get these these port, and if you're wealthy enough, if you're lucky enough. You'll have one, maybe if you're super wealthy, you can have two portraits done for posterity. And you, when you want you to be represented, you're being represented as, as an idea. It's not the moment. And that's why I showed that the one picture of Calvin when you're, he's, it's, it's not about the moment that you're capturing, which is what we do now. It's about the idea that you represent. It's an image, right? So here's another one. And these are, I think, beautiful paintings. So a portrait of a young girl. So here is a self-portrait of uh, Durier. He was, a bit, he was a little arrogant, very, you know, very, uh, he thought very well of himself. And, and there's uh, a lot that could be said you know, with, with, with um, some of his self-portraits, especially this one, where he's actually taking the position of Christ. Yeah, 
um, especially with the hand gesture. And it, it's also based off of other imagery of Christ. So it's a little like, oh boy, but it's somber, it's serious. And as we go through his uh, portrait of Leonardo da Vinci, um, let's see if I have any good notes on here. Um, but, um, um, so a painter, uh, no, wait. So if a painter had smiles in their artwork, they would be considered and deemed radical um, because then the smile becomes the focus of the picture and not the individual. So like the Mona Lisa, you know? Yeah, I know it's like, I, I, the first time I did this, I kept it out because it's like, you know what? It's the Mona Lisa, I'm not gonna put it in. So it's like, like, how do I not put in the Mona Lisa? Oh, anyway, impetuous youth. Okay, so the Mona Lisa, it has the, the, the smile, you know, the song, Mona Lisa smile. I, um, uh, but it's it's this it's it's ambiguous at best. Like it's it's almost it's more of a smirk. So we do see a lot more smirks that would be represented in art because by by having the the, the large smile again that was considered uh, unsightly. Uh, it was considered uh, unfashionable and lewd. It was considered a lot of. But if you had a slight smirk, it's easier to pose for. But it's also like it, it's more suggestive. Um, and I think that's what one of the big things with with her small, ever so subtle smirk that that it conveys. You know, it, it piques interest. Um, can a smirk be condescension, flirtation, wistfulness, boredom, discomfort, contentment, mild embarrassment? You know, so there's a lot of different ways that it can be interpreted, which leaves it open and it, and it leaves the viewer more engaged with the piece. Um, it's very ambiguous. Um, so with the, the Mona Lisa, it, the, the, the ambiguity is, is part of the meaning, like especially in the last hundred years or so that, that has developed around this piece. Um, you know, so the debate about the posture of the mouth, you know, like it's, it's this ongoing conflict of serious and smirk. Um, and I, I, I saw this one video a long, a long time ago that explained it. And they said that the line of her mouth is not actually in the shape of a smile. It's the shadow. So it's the, the, the way that he did the, um, um, oh my God, so motto, the, 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 is that's in the, the contours, the shadow is what you would see as a smile. So, so it, it is this tug and play and pull it, which gets you engaged in it. Um, and that's the, kind of the, the, the genius of Da Vinci with, with you know, like the understanding of the emotional stake, you know, something ever so subtle. Um, so, so that we, again, the, uh, throughout most of history, there's the vast majority, and not all, but the vast majority of what you see, it, it is there's very little smiles, very little to, you know, maybe they didn't have a lot to smile at, I don't know. But on the other hand, well, well actually, I have a lot more self portraits I threw in a bunch of self-portraits, um, female artists, one, one of the few in the time period. So we have Rembrandt, again, a self-portrait. Um, the symbolism of the, the clothes that he's wearing, the, the staff that he has, and the, even the rough surface that he paints and he portraying himself, he, he's po willingly portraying himself old. You know, he, he's blemished. He's not, he's not hiding that. He's not hiding the, the, the flaws of age of, of, of his body, of, uh, but he's not smiling either. Um, yeah, yeah, right? I, I went to the Rembrandt house when I was in Amsterdam and, and like, he, he almost died a pauper. Like, so we say regal, but it's like, because huh, there was a lot of legal battles and this and that. And it's, it's as many problems then as there are now. So here's a, a self-portrait. Um, well, a portrait of the Grand Duchess Alexandra. So we, uh, it's, a, it's, a smirk, it's a smirk. We got to say smirk, but I, I can't say smile. You know? Not, and here we have another, again, the, the symbolism behind a lot of these pieces are, are the items and things that they ha are holding or around them. So if, if they have a map, maybe they're involved with trade. You know, like if they, if they have a, a compass or a a triangle, then then geometry. Maybe they're well educated. You know, so, so a lot of the symbolism comes around through that. So the Goya piece, beautiful, gorgeous. I but uh, this one does well. A smirk. Uh, again, more of a smirk than a smile. But I love, and I'm my French is terrible. So correct me if, if you know French. But Ing, um, what, what, this one you could find if you go to the um the Frick. Museum in, in New York City, they have this one. So you should definitely check it out. So the, her positioning, so she she had to pose for this multiple times. Um, I, I think what, what I read about this one is she got tired of it. She got tired of posing. So eventually she just gave up on it. You know, so, um, but here, you know, it's, it's, it's this, you know, this, this kind of almost haughty gesture. 
uh, uh, with the mirror behind her as well. Um, so it's, it, it's half smile is kind of pensive and meditative. Um, it's serene um, and, and luminously modern. Um, so, but see that that tilt of the head that suggests, you know, like there's, there's, there's thoughts going on behind, you know. So there's a lot going on there. Um, so playing into more of the ideas of, of how artists wish to be represented. Um, here we have Vincent Van Gogh. You know, when we think of expressionist art, like this is the man um, that that really brought in the idea of the inward uh, emotion, the inward feeling, the inward moods. And here he is presenting himself without a smile. Um, you know, and he was the the, the colorly uh, the master of of you know color as expression. And you know, he, he by today's standards probably would be diagnosed as bipolar. You know, he, he was self committed. Um, and and he had this love of life, this exuberance. And and did anyone know his last words? I just totally forgot. But it was you know, there's something about like this pain lasts forever, uh, something like that. You know, and then he shot himself. Um, most people think uh, so. So, but he, he a highly emotional individual. And here, his self portraits, it's it's holding that back. Um, Frida, so. And, and Frida came from, uh, well, again, a lot of symbolism. She was considered, um, the, the surrealists took her in. Um, so everything that you see is, is symbolism. So she was not even, I wouldn't even say second fiddle to her husband, Diego Rivera. Right? She was coming from a very, uh, con very conservative uh, Mexican, you know, traditional background. Meanwhile, she was bisexual. She, she wore pants <gasps> in the 1920s. She... She also suffered a major accident that left her in complete pain her whole life. So she, she had a lot of, and you know, she and Diego got divorced twice and married again, and you know, divorced once but married twice. Yeah, a lot of issues. And when she's presenting herself, again, she she shows the hair that's on her lip. She shows her unibrow. She's representing herself as is, but no smile, or or even emotional expression. So so there is. It gets, and we can look at it and we can think of it as complex, but um, what I want to emphasize again, I'll let you read that, is that idea that, that these photos, these paintings, and, and the photography, it's not intended to capture the moment. It's meant to be talking about you know, an image that they're representing. And I, that's why I deliberately found this one. Yeah, because Calvin's all about that moment. And the father is trying to get the image. You know, like when you ever take your kids to get pictures with the Easter bunny or Santa Claus and you take an infant and they're crying and crying, that's the moment that you're capturing. But you're really trying to capture the idea of the baby with the first time with Santa. And, you know, and it's, who's this weirdo? Uh, you know, so, so there's a conflict of, of ideas between adults and children. You know, so, so I throw that in, which leads me into photography. And photography came about, um, you know, the first photo people would say in the 1830s. Um, and it, it was an emerging technology. It, it wasn't because people were in the art world were not deeming it as art. Um, so that was that that whole like you know something new. So we got to poo poo it. We don't. Poo -poo. But uh, the artists of the time, the writers, they they people that were able to sit down for the photographs, same thing. Like, okay, so if we're saying like oh, okay, well they don't have to sit for hours now. We only have to hold that smile for like 30, 60 seconds. You know whatever. So why aren't they smiling? Well, that tells you, well, there's more of a cultural context. So, so we have Edgar Allan Poe, you know, deep, dark, depressing. Um, here we have certain generals. And um, yeah, because again, you want to be taken seriously. And here's the, here's, there it is. There's my, my Mark Twain. Who, it was, he was a humorist. And, you know, a photograph is a most important document. There is nothing more damning to go down to posterity than a silly, foolish smile caught and fixed forever. Because you know, it's a representation. It's that image that you're trying to portray of oneself. I, I put in. I found some other pictures. And this is Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, Nietzsche. Uh, I love. My, his, yeah, I know. I say Nietzsche. I say Nietzsche. Uh, I, I, a, just look at that beard. Look at that mustache. Look at that. That's what matters, you know. Anyway, existentialist philosopher. Like, and he has that serious philosopher kind of look to him. You know, Ernest Hemingway, a very another troubled man. Um. Um. I put in an uh, Albert Einstein, but there is the, huh? I think he's kind of like doing what I got there, but he's got the mustache. But we all know the famous photo of him making the silly face, right? And that was what? That was done in the like, late 40s, early 50s. 
Um, and it was just, you know, it was just of the moment. That one's of the moment. But when it comes time to get your picture taken, one of my favorites, James Joyce, you know, you, you, you take it seriously, you know? So no matter how many eye surgeries you've had, um, that eventually killed him. Um, I think it was, he had syphilis and that he had to get, and it was, you know, um, he died like either the beginning or the outbreak of World War II. So uh, um, here we have Abraham Lincoln. When we think of our political figures, we, we think of them, um, especially at this time period, we think of them in a very serious manner. And and what I read, like like Abraham Lincoln was was known to to crack a lot of jokes. He can be very funny, um, but but when we think of the great emancipator, when we think of our 16th president that was involved during the Civil War, we don't want to think of some guy that was able to make a whole whole room break up laughing. So the images that we have of him tend to be very serious and somber, but not all. I do have here's one picture I found. Uh, I, I got. And that looks right. It's it's not what we're used to because that that concept, the image, the idea of the man is is totally changed. You know, just through that smile, and that's why they didn't smile so much. Um, oh, I didn't talk about a lot of my a lot of my notes. I just flew by. Oh boy. Okay, so I went off to here. The next one I wanted to talk about here. We're going back to Caravaggio. So I'm going to read that first. And this was from this this guy Nicholas Jeeves who did this like a whole thing on on his take on on the smile. Um, this is an in your face voracious smile. The pile of instruments uh, at Eros feet adds to the aura of audacity. Um, since the Renaissance, the idea of instruments being put in became a symbol of love. Um, so knowing that the irresponsible uh, smile mocks the tools of human intellect and ambition, the lute and the open music sheet, the compass and the triangle symbolizing geometry, the discarded armory, all give way before triumphant love. So, and at the time when, when Caravaggio was a nut, you know, he, he, oh my God, he was a murderer. He, again, another guy that would probably be, you know, he had mental health issues. Um, he was trying to get the, trying to get a pardon from the Pope. You know, he, weird, disturbed life. Um, he would get into his paintings and go crazy with it. And then he would not paint for weeks and he would take his sword and go out and public. he arrested multiple times and you, know, you name it. Um, but he, he lived this exuberant over the top lifestyle and his artwork portrayed that as well. Um, and then in this one too. So like uh, you have Eros, you know, the, the, the God of love, like lust. Um, so uh, reading the other one, it's in this time, even in the time that, that this was made, it was viewed as this almost like a homosexual passion. Uh, so so he, he was con uh, uh, not just the, 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 the use of that smile, but, but uh, the subject matter, a lot of the things that he did, the way he presented his imagery, it, he was scandalous in his own time. Um, so, but, but, so the smile was reserved, it was considered lewd. Um, it was considered, um, oh, I don't know where that, my notes on that are. Um, it was considered for the common people. It was considered for the entertainment. It was considered for the drunks. Um, but there was one group of people that, that kind of embraced it, and, and that was the Dutch. So this is Judith Leister. So she did a whole bunch of these, because they, and partly because they sold, and then and partly because it was the, 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 the exuberance and, and joys of life. So, you know, like the, the jolly troper, you know, the jolly drinker. So he's, he's kind of, he's got a little bit of red, he's drunk. So it's, it's, but it's showing those joys of life. So this is almost kind of like that moment, right? So um, here's another one of, you know, so it's, again, she's drunk. Um, she, and there's the stein. So, so you equate, the smile gets equated. Yeah, it's big, yeah. So, but the, the, it gets equated to the aspects of, you know, the, the smile to drinking, the, to the, the you're not able to control one's emotions, things like that. Um, did you so they, yeah, they played with some of them did. So again, the lower class musicians, drunks, it was an opportunity to be able to explore because um, you know, there's so many uh, 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 art now we think of is just so open. You could do whatever you want. You know, but, but back then there were, there were certain rules, certain etiquette, certain guides. And you know, think of like, I just watched um, Little Women, the, the most recent one, you know, and the whole thing, like the, the, the Mary Jo, Joe, she doesn't want to get married, right? That's the whole thing. Like, and how many uh, uh, Jane Austen uh, novels? That's what the woman has to do. Because what other options do they have? So, so there's so many construction uh, constrictions on society, you know, and it it's, it gets portrayed in a lot of our art. But again, so some of them, they're, they're, this is an opportunity to be able to explore that. And here's a, a artist who who was actually he was inspired and influenced off of 
um, Caravaggio with, with the, the grandness, the, the, the scandalous aspects of it. And where's my notes on this guy? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I didn't print it out. So with his, um, it's the Laughing Violinist was done 1624, at least a little bit after uh, Caravaggio. So it's this great example of a um, of low life. He's, just, he's a musician, so he's smiling. And um, it, it's, so yeah, since the Renaissance, music got associated with the idea of, of love. So um, von Horntorst, he, he was inspired by Caravaggio. And do I even have to say that there's massive sexual un uh, undertones here? Overtones, I should say. The gesture that he's making is extremely explicit. <laughs> and he's looking at a specific, you know, so um, so that in itself is, is pretty scandalous. Um, but, but then what's even more, more so is um, you know, like when he has the skill of Caravaggio, so to really heighten this, it's, it's, it's beautiful. But if you take this piece, and I, I, again, I found this, it's supposed to, it's, it's on one wall, and on the other wall is this piece, The Woman Counting Money. If she's counting money, what is she? She's probably, yeah, she's, oh, so he's really pushing the boundaries there. And she's got that smile. Smile. So do you see people smiling? So here is another one of uh, Hogarth. He, he was um, he only, not only, I shouldn't say that because I don't know all of his artwork. But he used the smile in, in four um, he, his moral tales. That's another aspect that you see a lot of. Uh, so the smile, if it's reserved for the lewd, for the drunkard, for the poor, for the disease, for, you know, for, well, actually, maybe not the disease, but for, for the, the, the improperly acted people. And in this one, he does this, the harlot's progress. Um, it's the story of, of the, the woman that, that she gets wrongly accused and it gets put into a reformery or whatever. And all the women that she's around, faces on them. They're, they're, the, 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 those grinnings, those the nasty smiles and everything are representative of their character, and it's not positive. Um, so here's another one that he did, Gin Lane and Beer Street. So, and you see how everyone, it's, it's a mess. Like, oh my gosh, this is the no-nos, the moral tale, the no-nos of, you know, the don't drink alcohol, just bad. You know, so we tried that in this country for a while. Or I don't even drink, so whatever, I don't know. So, but you see, like some of the people that they're they're dying, she's dropping her kid. The one guy that he looks more skin and bone. So it's it's so it's it's using that smile, using the the the, the gesture. Look at her face. Like it, it's 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 a moral tale. Um, so I have this other one. So this is John Steen, which is this is interesting because this one's a self portrait, <laughs> but he's as musician. And again, the so. Musicians and actors, you know, prior to, to uh, the 20th century, you know, like they were not to be trusted, right? When you think about, again, in, um, in Little Women that I just saw, uh, one of the daughters wanted to be an actress, and, and that was, that's a profession that was frowned upon. And, and at one point, they, they even say, like, there's, no, there's virtually no difference between an actor and a, and a, and a harlot. You know? uh, so there was very little social mobility. But so for him to be presenting himself in this manner as this musician with that smile and that stein, huh, that's a little bold. That's a little interesting that he would do that. Okay, so let me go through, because I have a couple more notes that, I don't know. Sorry, just bear with me for a second. So anyway, okay, so yeah, this is one guy that, the next one that I want to show is um, Joseph de Cruz, and they, they made this into a meme. Um, him. So he was a artist in the late 1700s um, that that defied. I, I had to throw it in because I like, I, I, oh my god, he defied the norms. Um, he did a lot of these support. Where he he has these smirks, these these you know, like so all of these facial gestures. And this is the one that we see. This is turned into a meme. Um, I will talk about it later. So what, what you do is you take a contemporary song like rap or hip hop or with with bad lyrics and you put it into old english like like you know like english from 300 years ago so it, it's pretty funny so but he would do these hey this he's trying to capture that moment you know and and this is very uh, outrageous for the time so the idea of catching a yawn you know it makes me actually kind of, i'm going to be ready to yawn here hey, trying to hold it off um here's another one like like a self-portrait of a man surprised oh and terrified so, 
So he, he, he was very playful with it. There was another one, I didn't put it in, but the, of, of the angry lover catching his mistress. <gasps> so you see the window and he's like, has a gun. And he, you know, <laughs> oh my. So, but yeah, there's another one that he did of Marie Antoinette. So, and, and there, again, it's more, I would say a smirk. So, oh, but yeah, so, so, but this is the meme. So, so again, this is, so it's, you, you take, you put it into old English, even though he's French. So, so you, you play with it so that it seems, it becomes a lot funnier. So here's the one, yeah, the jealous husband. So he's got the gun, like you see the look in his face because he caught her. So he's all about capturing that moment. Um, so yeah, and then, so, so yeah, it's, it's, I do declare it's still most outstandingly pleasant to be involved in gang. It's good to be a gangster. It's, anyway. Okay, so I'm, I'm basically done with, with a couple of the sections. Now we're going to go into a little bit more contemporary. Um, so I remember I said that, that the whole idea of the, of the smile, the once representation, it, it, it's an image. You know, it's, it's, it's not about the moment. It's about trying to portray the posterity of one's uh, identity. It's image-based. And you know, it's, there was a great shift, you know, not with the invention of the camera, because we saw so many pictures you know, that, that followed suit, the cultural context of not smiling. And it really wasn't, I feel, this is my, my take on it. It wasn't until the invention of the camera. And Moybridge was the one that, that, that um, really helped that along. It was that gentleman's bet. Because one of the things that was truly hard to capture is, is a smile, a properly ac you know, accurate smile. Because if you hold it for too long, you know, it starts to hurt and it doesn't look real. The other thing was people weren't sure. There was a, a long on ongoing debate um, on if a horse is running, do all of its four feet ever leave the ground? So the proper portrayal and representation of things in com constant motion of the moment were hard to capture. So I, I, it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't really a better, it was more like a gentleman's argument you know, between like two wealthy, like Vanderbilt and Carnegie or something. So they got Moybridge and he set up like this, this sheet, 150 feet and 24 trip wires. And, and you know, he had to develop a new camera and he caught the horse you know, in silhouette. And sure enough, there it is, the horse, all four legs got off. Ah, yeah. But why am I saying all of this? What the hell does it have to do with it? Okay, because this is what ushered in photography, from photography to, to film, the, the moving pictures. And, and so, yeah, this is like the whole Moybridge thing. I'm not going to go into it. Um, but it, it led into film. And, and again, when, when silent films came out, the shorts, it was for the low end of the population, right? Anyone ever see Bram Stoker's Dracula? Great movie. Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992, Gary Oldman. And when he goes to London and he sees the, 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 the picture shows, he's so mar like, oh my God, this technology. And, and Winona Ryder, who's, you know, the, the, she's like, if you, you know, wish to see culture, I suggest you go to a museum, not deal with this common stuff, you know, something like, because that's what it was considered back then. You know, it was, con it was for the commoners. It was not, but there were people that, that, that revolutionized it, like, like Charlie Chaplin, like, Oh my God, I love Charlie Chaplin, and and then this ushered in, especially with like the vaudevillian kind of aspect, this idea of playing it once again on image. And this is like this is where I I, I really differentiate our cultural for me at least. You know, you can argue it, maybe you agree, I don't know, but the cultural shift started to emerge with this idea of creating personas and image. You know, like how now that image is is it's not the man Charlie Chaplin, it's Tramp. So you're creating character. You're cre and you know yeah they had. Shakespeare and plays and stuff, but but now it's it's being documented, it's filmed. So you know, you, so you you have the tram. You have the oversized shoes, the tight top, the, the loose bottom. You know, and he's he's the, the lovable loser. You know, he's that the everybody that we can all identify with. Oh, you know that one. Oh, you know, the kid. You know, uh, what else? Uh, modern times, Gold Rush, great stuff. Other ones that I loved as a kid um, were the Marx Brothers. You know, again, they came straight off of vaudeville. And, you know, each of the brothers, they took on a different persona. So you had Groucho, Chico, Harpo, and Zeppo. You know, they all got their names in different ways. But Groucho, he's, he's the shyster, like a, a shyster Jew. Uh, you have Chico, he's the immigrant Italian. And then you have Harpo, he's the in, immigrant uh, um, um, Irish. So I, I actually I gave this lecture at, at, at Split Town, and, and it was somebody that, that pointed that out. I was like, yeah, that's what they, but yeah, because they, they're playing on those stereotypes. But at, at the same time, you know, they're, they're animated characters. Um, and get, love their movies. So they were were basically cartoon characters before there were cartoons. You know, so, so and the idea of the you know they became caricatures. Um, so 
we see like uh, a readily identifiable, you know, the glasses with the mustache and the no that's Groucho. That's so all the, the image of these, and they were turned into cartoons, you know, and with their their rascals, their their chaotic uh, stamp uh, trampling down on authority kind of attitudes. Um, they actually uh, Salvador Dali was a big fan, uh, particularly of Harpo, and um, when he got to meet them, he he took a harp. And he changed the, the strings and he put barbed wire. And then on the harp, he glued uh, silverware. Because Harpo was, was, you know, there's always like homeless or whatever. He's always stealing the silverware, you know. So, so it, it, he presented it. So he called them the great surrealists of cinema. Because, again, it's, it's defined aspects of reality. It's, it's playing into this idea of, of these characters, this image. Um, so even like Salvador Dali, the way that he presented himself, you know, like his uh, mustache his over-the-top personality. He lived his life. He was a very strange fellow too. Um, you know, but but he and we'll get into others as well. So but he the image of the artist is is just as important as the artwork to a degree at times. Um there's this very famous quote, you know, by by Cary Grant. Everyone wants to be Cary Grant. Even I want to be Cary Grant. Again, you know, so that so I, I take that whole idea of the smile, you know, like again as posterity and and so the idea of public image, the idea of, of all that. It's like and I'm gonna lead into Warhol. I talked a little bit maybe before we started recording, but Andy Warhol, you know, he he with pop art was really tapping into the cultural components of the time. And and so he wore his silver wig. He's all about image, because that's what pop art is about, because that's what our country and our culture has become. It's about image versus substance so so he, he worked at the factory where he mass produced art you know he'd do campbell soup cans he'd do mass produced products you know and it, so it was the idea of an image and watch his interviews like you see it's it's so there he lived his life the way he he based on his artistic philosophy so and in the 80s like here's one of some of the portraits that he did with these self portraits and they're camouflage so, so what does that mean? What does that suggest when we deal with the idea, the, the idea of images hiding oneself? He was extremely individual. As an individual, he was extremely. Uh, um, he liked. He was a voyeur, but he was very private. He was extremely private in his life. He didn't, you know. He, but he liked when other people were over the top, and he invited them all into his studio, the factory, to to you know, people on, on uh, amphetamines and drugs and and. You know the people that were outside the norm of society at the time, you know, transvestites and and you know, just just uh, people that were uh, on the fringe and and over the top. And he invited them, but he was very private. So when this is a, a psychological treasure trove with these these camouflage self portraits that he did, because um, again he tapped into with the idea of of pop modern culture, the idea of the image. It's you know, he Marilyn Monroe is probably the most famous icon that he he picked. He took this picture of Marilyn Monroe out of a magazine. You know, it was public domain. So, but he changed the context enough, so that's why he didn't get sued for this one. And you know, he's using bright colors, pop colors. It draws you in. It grabs your attention. Then what he's showing is, and what he's saying is that this is less of a. It's not about an individual. It's not about a person. It's about the idea. She's a sex symbol. We mass produce her. You know, that's the culture we live in. We don't think of her as a person. We think of her as an object, you know, for, for good or bad. He was just you know, showing the way that we saw things. So that idea of image, you know, whether it be in, in our fine art now, you know, whether it be in, in, in uh, film, it, it's a, a big thing. Um, and then it leads me to, contemporarily speaking, you know, music. Like uh, how often do we identify by the music that we listen to and you know how much like, like the Beatles, like uh, come on, like, with Abbey Road, John Lennon with Peace, Love, and all of this other stuff, the image that he portrayed. Yet he was divorced twice. He abandoned his kid. He was a wife beater. Um, he he a lot of ethnic slurs to his Jewish um, uh, managers and stuff. He he, yeah. <laughs> so so like you know, but the image that we have of John Lennon is is this one of of peace and understanding and all of that and blah 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 blah. blah. Right, so here we go. I had to throw in a rock song, you know, this Metropolis, get it, see, all right, on this geography, on rock and roll, all right, so yeah, so the image of, of when we see this picture of, of uh, Lennon uh, with the glasses, we think of a specific thing about him um, that, again, the posterity versus the reality, um, yeah, 
So I, I threw in a couple other ones, like like Twisted Sister. Like this is not a band that I was a big fan. I was, you know, you all know Twisted Sister, right? Like the, the we want to rock, rock. I want. Did you know that they were sober? When this picture was taken, they were sober. Period. They were straight edge. Really? Yes. And they didn't want that leaked out because it would hurt their their cred. Yeah, the image. I. I and the, um, I think it was, was it at a Trump rally they were playing this? And they like sent a cease and desist order. Like, you know, we, we know. Like, you're, you're the ones that, you know, what was the, the one, not this one. It was the other one. Uh, you know, rebellious type song. But but their lifestyles are, 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 don't really portray that so much. I was going to, I think, I don't know if I did, but I was going to put in one of Alice Cooper also. Um, for, you know, this they are Speed My Frankenstein and, you know, like uh, School's Out Forever. After many years of his drug abuse, he ended up becoming straight edge and uh, born again Christian. You know, he still is. Um, so, but David Bowie, another perfect example. He uh, considered like the chameleon of of the music world, where he can adapt. He did adapt from the the hippie movement to the glam rock to like if you saw some of his stuff in the '90s, like it's very dark and you know, he was influenced off of like Nine Inch Nails and other bands. So, and you know, he portrayed. Um, there was a great documentary that came out last year. Um, Moonage uh, Daydream. It was it's beautiful. It, check it out. It's it's great. It talks. It's all about his artistic endeavors and and desires and drive as an artist to try new things and, and phenomenal. So his Ziggy Stardust as a character, you know, he's he's in a concept album and he took on that character. Um, and then which leads me to Marilyn Manson, which is one of my favorites. He's not a good person, terrible human being, but his artwork and he himself he presents that image as the almost the underbelly of America, um, the darker side. And, and his music plays into that. Um, so like, like even the name, Marilyn Manson, I always I talk about this. Marilyn, he, he, he and every band member in the beginning took names Marilyn from Marilyn Monroe and Manson from Charles Manson. So the image of beauty and evil. And uh, both of the, Mar Char um, Marilyn Monroe and Charles Manson, both were on covers of, of Time magazine. Again, and he would say, he argue, it's all about popularity. It's not about being good or evil. It's not about your substance. It's just about being popular. That's what America is. And that's kind of what Warhol was getting at, right? You know, so anyway, so throw on one of these. You know, raise your hands and, and your hair. Like just, you just don't care. Anyway, so but playing into the idea of, of what else can the smile be? In a contemporary sense, like it's, it's reserved for sociopaths. It's reserved for uh, uh, psychopaths, for people that are unhinged. So this was the Joker movie that came out in, oh, no, no, this was the, the Batman movies that came out in like 2009 or whatever. And, you know, Heath Ledger playing the Joker. Um, so I, I threw in a couple there. And, and again, we we'll see the, the way that they, that, that maniacal smile that's utilized by the Joker. Uh, yeah, we, we think of it as being unhinged. Um, so did anyone see the Joker movie that came out in 2019? Yeah, really good. I think I think it should have won Best Picture. Um, I think Parasite won, but because it really talked about mental health and this and that, and and how he was, it's, it's pretty good. So, but and, and in the movie, he's so miserable, and at this scene where he's looking at, he's putting on the makeup, you know, to be a happy clown, yeah, and he has, he's forcing himself to smile while he's crying because he's just so miserable, you know, and, it, and he gets driven over the edge. Um, so I, I just tossed this one in as well because this was from um, a movie that came out called Pearl last year. Did anyone see it? It's a kind of a horror suspense. I'm not into horror, but when I read about this, it's it's based on a true story from 1920. It's about this girl that lives in Texas. She wants to be a movie star and this and that, and, and you know her parents are overbearing or whatever, and she, she can't do it. She ends up killing a lot of people. You know, it kills her family, and you know. And at the end of the movie, after she, you know, the the her husband who goes away to World War One comes back. Um, and she, he catches her, like he sees that the parents are dead, like posed it at the dinner table or something. And she's holding an ax and the director said, just smile and hold the smile. And the whole end of the movie, the little credits is just her smiling. And you see, like, and then he, as she's smiling for minutes, she starts tearing. And, and it's that idea. Like, like here's this, this. I don't know, maybe sociopath's not the right word, but she, she's just murdered all these people, like her family and this and that, and her husband sees her and is confronted with this. And, and it's, it's that revelation. So she's, she's putting on that smile, but you can see behind the eyes, like there's, there's some deep psychological, it's not real. You know, the smile is just a facade. 
it's 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 a cam camouflage like Warhol, and it's it's powerful. It's a powerful image. Um, but playing more on image, let's get a little more lighthearted. I, I have to talk about. I mean, come on, either Stephen Colbert or the character Stephen Colbert, right? He almost got he got in trouble because when he went to um, the Tonight Show, he he did his character of Stephen Colbert, and Comedy Central said you can't do that. So even though it's his name, you know, so but but he took on this persona of this kind of like not very well educated, but you know, like pompous uh, 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 pundit. And you know, like he, the book, I am America, and so can you. Very, you know, like, uh, and he gave himself his own. Uh, that that's his the Stephen Colbert Award for the literary excellence. So as he, you know, it's but that was that that the blowhard kind of pundits that we get. You know, like, and then you know you find out that these pundits are doing all sorts of terrible things. You know? so like, he he totally plays on that. Um, so that, that that whole America, you know, it's it's brilliant. So hilarious. Okay, so, but now we got to talk about so the, the, the next aspect, again, in, in this evolution of memes and the evolution of image. Um, so we're going to go into some memes. So um, if you guys have seen this one, right, and they'll, they'll, they'll change it. Well, they'll put different images uh, on the faces of the women. So it's obviously the guys looking at the other girl. <gasps> so so, so they, they, they throw that in. So, so what, what, what don't we talk about memes? Let's talk about memes. Yes, more. We, do we remember this one? Grumpy cat. It's just some guy took a picture of his cat, you know, and the cat just had this grumpy look. So, so they they turned it into this meme. It explodes on the internet, and people just it's free reign. So people can create whatever captions that fit the criteria of that image. You know, the grumpy cat. I had fun once. Um. So okay. So let's see if I can give you. Oh, that's. Oh my God, they're all out of out of order. My notes here. Because the next one I have. Have you seen this one? No. So this is. Ah, oh, gosh. Give me, I'm sorry. Give me a minute here. So it's, you know, it, it was actually taken from a, a video and they turned it into the still. So it's the person that's blinking, kind of like usually when, like, you can't believe something just happened. And I don't have my notes on this one. Oh, my God. Dang. So uh, I didn't put these in order, but I have them all here. It's so frustrating. Okay. But, you know, that one? Has anyone seen this one? No. Okay, you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go back to this one. This one is blinking white guy. So, <laughs> blinking white guy is the name of the meme. Blinking, blinking, like you blink your eyes. So, um, and the origin it came from back from from 2013. Um, it it started as as a as a gif, and then, you know then they turned it into this. So it's it's um the idea is uh where's the. Da, 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 da. Mm. Yeah, when, when you are presented with something with something so outrageous, like somebody says something so stupid, you you, you do like a double take. Oh, it's like that's that's what this meme is used for. All right, so this is hide the pain, Harold. Have you seen that? Nobody seen this one. Oh, this. So this is he's actually European. The man. Had, um, it, it's these are photo stills for products. So so he's just smiling for the. But behind the picture, the picture he looks like he's like again hiding a lot of pain. Like he's just you know, uh, so so that's what, but it's not you know, like it was obvious. It was for whatever advertisements. He it became a big meme. You know, there's several pictures of him where, it, and that's just kind of the facial expression. Turns out the the actual actor he embraced it, um, and and he 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 actually ended up doing a lot of spots on TV shows, you know, like guest appearances, and he ended up making good money by, by playing into it, you know, with, with, instead of, you know, like letting, like, oh no, like, you don't have much control over it once it gets, uh, a meme gets out like that. So you can either embrace it and go along with the ride, or you can try to fight it and, you know, you're not going to win. Um, so, so yeah, so he, he did. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, he, he's from Hungary. And um, I think it started, the meme started in 2014. Um, so what else? So, uh, this is the the uh, most in, uh, interesting man in the world. It was a Dos Equis commercial, so so they, yeah, they they played up on it. Uh, I don't always get sick, but when I do, it's the first day of summer vacation. You know, so it's like so something bad happens, or you know, it's like I don't always, you know, like I don't always drink beer, but when I do, it's Dos Equis. So it's I don't always something, and then poop. You know, so it's playing up on that. So yes, yeah, there's again hide the, hide the pain, Harold. You know. So, but, but that idea of, of the, the emoji is something that, that I remember when I, I was living in Japan um, a while ago, I don't want to say how long ago, but this is before we even had the emojis. It was just, you know, you, you do like the semicolon or colon with the little uh, 
And that's what people would do in Japan. You know, and, and then it, 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 it exploded. It was interesting because at the time, the Japanese would do their, their emoji you know, characters, and it's more uh, um, horizontal, well, 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 vertical, and, and we would do ours more horizontal. But in the, the actual characters, it was with us, it was more about the use of the eyes, and with them, it was more of the use of the – no, for Americans, it was more of the use of the mouth. And, and for the Japanese, just with the, the colon and stuff, it was more of the, the eyes. So but now we, we have this whole slew. We have a whole language that can be you know, just in, in emojis as well. Um, do, 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 do. The next one I have is the scumbag Steve. So I see I'm, I'm getting you guys caught up with what the kids are into. So this is an actual picture of some guy at a party, a college, whatever. And and someone looked at it and said that just he just looks like a scumbag, so so they they turned it into it you know break uh, break something expensive uh, of yours why would you spend that much money P push the blame away so turns out he kind of was a, a bit of a scumbag um I found, uh, he was I don't know I, I I I don't mean like I don't know I don't know the guy but but apparently the stories that I've read like he 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 they found him and and yeah some of the, you know whatever. But there's this girl. This is the um, uh, uh, annoying Facebook girl. So, and you got, I feel bad at, and for a lot of these because um, she was just with her friends. She's like 14 year old or whatever, making silly faces, and and they turned it to a meme. She has no control over it. Um, and actually, by the time she she hit um, college age, the guy that was in this picture actually wrote a, a, a open letter to her. You know, explaining what's going to happen in your life. Explaining like you're going to get confronted by people that you don't even know. It's, it's almost like celebrityism, except you don't get the you know the lucrative aspects of being a celebrity. So you you, you can fight it, or or you can just you know laugh it off um, and and play it up. You know, people are going to want to take pictures with you. People are gonna, people are going to have con conceived notions. You know, and uh, so it's it's it's. it's Jackie Chan. So again, it, it turned into a me. Like, like why why would you? So, so, but, but people do that, you know, because we, we, we attach associations to things, um, you know, that's just our culture. Um, so this is a good guy, Greg. So it's just a good guy. So that's, that's the meme. Has anyone ever seen this one? This is a picture that the guy took a pic. Oh. Yeah. The guy took a picture. It was that there was a house that was, that was caught fire and, and he was just took a picture. He's like to his daughter. He said, look at the camera, smile. And she, she she just made a smile, like so. It looks like she's the fire star, like she started it. So it's like whenever you, my neighbor used to listen to Justin Bieber, he used to. <laughs> oh yeah, a Pearl. So that's that's the idea because it was just it's just uh, it just so happened that the expression, the smile that she created, um, turned into this. Turns out last year, you know the craze of the NFTs. Do you remember that the, the Bitcoin and NFT or two years ago, or whatever? She turned this picture into an NFT and sold it for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So she capitalized on it. You know, she's now like, I don't know, 20 or whatever. So, so, so yeah, she, she got the good laugh there. <laughs> that's, that's um, the, the basketball player the, the, that I showed at the beginning, Yao Ming. So yeah, it's like, you get, you know, like so, so with that, you know, like, like the idea, like, uh, uh, you know, with, with our, right? With our with our our selfies, um, and they even say this in in on TV. Oh, I've read several articles. Like, maybe you shouldn't be posting pictures of your kids uh, without consent, or you know, like your friends. You know, like so. I don't know because like, anything. This is the age in the world where I don't have answers. I, I I like to be more of a doomsday naysayer because it's just a lot more fun. But but there's, so but there's there's a lot that that. You know, we are, we're, we're, this is the culture that we live in. We don't have to worry about, you know, we don't need a lot of money to have our picture taken. We can take pictures with our camera, with our cell phones, you know, and high quality stuff that just, so the context, the cultural context has drastically shifted. Um, so, yeah, this painting, you know, of uh, the That's girl, the, yeah, the, the pearl, the, the girl with the pearl earring. Um, and so the, the context, you know, the camera, yeah, it's, it's this contemporary culture that we live in. So I do have a couple more pictures I, I, I wanted to show, just a, a blend, playing on the idea of, of silliness, weird, bizarre. This is a, a very famous uh, musician from the 90s, uh, Aphex Twin, electronic music from the UK. 
and he played up on it. He every album cover that he did, he put his this goofy, silly, over the top smile. So even in his music, he has a music video where you see this giant limo going by, and and, and there's this woman dancing, and as the camera pans up, it's his face. I was like, what? So he's totally playing up on it. So we can go from this maniacal, creepy, you say, like it was, and like this one, the the. Yeah, that's like the Richard D. James album. That's his name. So, you know, like the, the little kids with his face on it. It even in a lot of his music videos. Yeah, it gets to that point where it's it's that face. That's 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 what the smile can do. Um, again, like with the Joker and this and that. So, like, I, there's a lot of psychological aspects that could be viewed into it. Um, here's a, a more contemporary artist, and I have my notes on him, but I don't know what I did with them. Um, so this is uh, Yu Ming Jun. And he's a, a Chinese artist, and he's considered a, a, a cynical realist movement in China. And with, with these pieces, um, these maniacal grins again. You know, and what I read about it, it's, it's political criticism. So it's, it's, it's and social commentary, where, where the smile, just think of it, is the smile actually revealing? Can he create all this? Yeah. So, but is is the smile actually re- like, like again that spur of the moment when you capture somebody laughing, you know, like, and it's real? Is this very revealing, or is this more concealment? You know, so again, China, right? Like, it's, it is a dictatorship, you know. Yeah, like, oh, oh, that was Ao Weiwei, who who was arrested. Yeah. So, and and again, I have a uh, the, 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 the I ended with the maniacal stuff and the Joker. Check out the movie. So that's that's where I, I wrap it up. So a- any questions? I know it took like a weirdly weird turn at the end there because I wanted to focus on the ideas of image and and that idea of of how posterity and the image was po- viewed and portrayed in the cultural context for a very long time in the past versus where we are today. Um, and the, our technology and our media have a big say in that. So like even politicians and and going back to the um, uh, Abraham Lincoln, even politicians back uh, of yesteryear would always present themselves as serious, somber, stoic, uh, professional. But even today, um, we don't get that all the time. A lot of politicians, because they understand you know, they can't control everything. So uh, you will see politicians in various various aspects of emotional experiences. You know, you'll see them, you know, kissing babies. You'll see them smiling. You'll see them in certain situations where, you know, like that flood relief, you know, serious tones. So it's not just, you know, the, the lack of a smile today. You know, like now it's you've got to play to the media, you know, to to our technology. So that's all I got. I hope no idea. Questions? Oh, thank you. Thank you for talking with, with the uh, Al Dafini one. The, the, yeah. Well, I'm-